How are you guys? Countdown day 22 to my trip to Vegas. I want you guys to see this. See this? Look again. That's why Americans live paycheck to paycheck, to paycheck 76%. That's why like a number of people don't have any money in their account. And I don't have five to $1,000 in their account. You wanna know why the rest of the world is kicking our ass? Because the Americans live for the weekend. It's so quiet here, I could set off a... If a terrorist wanted to make a statement, they should just go to all these Amazon warehouse places on the weekend and just blow up a bomb. There's nobody around. I mean, they could just... They, they could say... People could say, ah! Oh. It, 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 you, you could basically land a 747. You could be aliens and attack this place. I just got off working for an event, a team play for an event, and there was about 4,000 people. And so I was, I've been there since about 9.30 and I got off at 6.51 p.m. Now I'm headed home. I don't work off, I don't live for the weekends anymore. If, to get ready for my page, my visit, my trip to Vegas, I need to get some extra money. So that means I got to work and serve others. See, in order to get rich, you have to learn how to serve. And... I was, thinking, I was just thinking about when I used to work at Disneyland. You know, I used to work at Terrace Land, and I used to work at the Blue Ball Hoop, Bayou. I remember when I worked at Tomorrowland, we, like, call off these codes, Flash 157, another code, like, Fry 155. They're just all these codes because the line would be lined up. You'd have, like, 40 or 50 people in your line at your table. So not only are you going to get the money, but you also have to get the food and you have to have these special orders. I was thinking about that today with these 4,000 people. Today I was serving pretzels and I had to make sure that I got the right order. So I remember it was like flashing back to Disneyland where you just have like these people and you're calling out these codes and you just have to like go into your own zone because you have to remember the code. And after you remember the code, you have to know how to get the food and after you get the food, Make it even worse, you got to learn how to balance your money. So you're like doing food, money. So just like multitasking. And then also I remember I used to work at, um, I had tried working a fast food job. I used to work at Togo's. That was my worst job. I, I, I tried to make some extra money in college in Togo's. I, I, I don't know what happened. I tried to make the sandwiches. You have to cut it a certain way. And this is before the days, if you ever go to Subway, they have like these, uh, pre-made breads now in our day you had to like god sound so old and this is just basically back in 19 like 90 or something where all you just used to have to like slice the bed just right to get six inches so you can have two six inch sandwiches and after you do your two six inch sandwiches you'd have to do a certain other thing so uh, that's interesting so basically what i'm telling you though in order for you to get money you got to learn how to help others and why you? Why am I talking to you like you're like Martin? What what are you rambling on about? I'm rambling on about because I'm just thinking about that times like where I had to work an extra job. You know, I remember you, there was this time where at UPS you used to actually have my, the drivers used to drop in money, like dollars and checks, and you would have to balance out the, how much money you got in each day based on their invoices. And I, that was like a, just like about 50 people in run room. And I remember just having to count the change, having to count the cash. And it was just like a, it was like a side job. And I just remember how I had to be so focused. And then what happened? Well, because of the California taxes, the moved their, the jobs moved away. And then the technology eventually that was replaced. And back then, I believe Amazon was just delivering books. They were doing some other things, and there were some other companies around. But now look how big Amazon is. I mean, they rule the world. You know, people who work for filament slash warehouse jobs, I, it just it kills me. I remember my first job was working in a warehouse at Petavina Mold and Die in Gardena off of El Segundo Boulevard. I remember I used to go in there and have to run like these giant presses. And after I ran the presses, I'd sit down with, I believe it was Nan, I can't think of his name. We used to sit down and solder. There was a time where there was manufacturing and we actually soldered things. We used to solder like those little solid, they used to be like the alarms. They used to be like a square 
and you would have to click it. And this is before they got smaller. They're actually garage, like almost a little bit bigger, like smaller than a garage size. And we used to call it a sonic alarm. I remember we used to produce those things and send them out to companies. I remember I used to have to package it up and you got to have to remember like the UPS things because it when it's shipping, you have billing, lading, prepaid bills. I just remember all that. So I remember that stuff. Cause so every time I pass out Amazon, I just flash back. Because I remember, you know, these used to be like just the shit jobs from my day. They, they, now you, you were not even cool. And now I see people like, they're like, you got enough money working at Amazon. People be buying Mercedes and BMWs. And it's just funny because I'm just thinking like, well, you know, I'm on my way to Vegas. And now I'm I'm learning a blackjack. I'll give you the blackjack tip of the day. And I'm sorry I'm just rambling, but I'm just to show you like when you work so much, you know, you you gotta like almost huck a lot, hustle like an immigrant. Like you know, my student loan was ninety four thousand. I can remember it clear as day when that person called me saying, Martin, we're gonna mark, we're gonna Martin, we're gonna mortgage, we're gonna garnish your wages and make you. Garnish your wages and take your paychecks. And she was fucking serious, man. She was not even like playing. I was like, but can I? Can you give me some time to get it to you? Can you? Can you give me? Let me work on. She's like, nope. We've waited enough time. And I remember she broke me down. I can imagine she's probably like some four foot one white lady, and she just broke this six foot two brother down. I was crying when I got off that phone. I was, I was grateful she gave me like a chance. So. I want you guys to remember, like, when you with these student loans and stuff, they ain't no joke, man. I know you think that student debt, when you hit that $1 trillion crisis, like, it's something that, oh, I don't have any money in it. You don't think you have any skin in the game with your loan, but you really do, because they're going to get that money. They're going to get it even by garnishing, by tech, for for your ta from your taxes, or you're just going to pay for it at higher interest. Your interest can maybe be two or three points higher because you're not paying your student loan. And I just remembered since then, if you look at my YouTube video, back in 2015, I started my student loan journey. Now we're sick, like about four years later, and now it's below 40,000. And now I'm just getting focused on a trip to Vegas because my up my goal is to take $1,000 and see if I can win $547,000. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, vacation slash you know i'm gonna hit those long islands because after that there's not going to be any more vacations till about december i only go on vacation maybe once or twice a year now until i get this loan paid off i don't deserve to be going out and having fun so i ain't going on no cruise i'm not going to guadalajara i'm not going anywhere man i people go i have people going on cruises sweden all kind of places iceland i'm like Damn, these people must have a lot of money because I ain't going nowhere. You know where the brother's going? I'm going to the house of Holiday Inn slash Motel 6. Or if I'm really lucky, I'll go to Best Western and really style out, man, on those soft beds. But even then, Best Western can get a little ghetto. So what I want to do, now that I'm 51, I want to be able to stay in like those four or five star hotels, have a cute woman with me, because you, know, you know I'm going to go out with those young girls now. It's, it's too late. Why am I going out with an older woman? Maybe she wants to have some fun. But if I get married, it's going to be the young girl, and we're going to have some fun. And she can take all my money, and then I'll die because it won't really matter. But I won't leave her with a student loan, and I'll leave her enough money where she can start her own family or do what she wants. So the theme of today is... What are you doing on the weekend? It's good. These people deserve to take this break because they work on high power lines. They do trenching. I think it's IEBW. And I, I know I know a lot of the guys. So it's a hard job. So they deserve, they deserve a day off. But after your day off, what are you going to do next? Are you going to take a day off once a month? Are you going to take a day off every weekend? Or, or are you going to maybe take one extra weekend, go learn something different? Maybe go get some OT. You know there's OT out there. Even for my job now, they're offering OT. So I'm going to go get that. I'm going to eat that OT up, man. And my tip for the day for dentists is, because I also, you know, have a series. I'm just going to just throw all at you. I have a, I've gone, I mean, for 35 years, you know, when I was like almost a sophomore, I started my journey in the dentist's office. You know, my parents didn't even want to take me to the dentist. I had to beg them. My mom didn't want to take me. So eventually it was my grandfather driving me in his 
night old truck. It used to have the truck with the stick shift. I can remember that truck. And <clears throat> it used to have the stick shift on the handle. And then I remember it was my grandmother and I riding on the RTD bus from South Central LA all the way to Beverly Hills. That's like almost an hour and a half bus ride. And then I got to ride back on the bus because I'd go to the dentist's office. He did a gum surgery. Or if it wasn't in a gum surgery, he would take out like some wisdom teeth. I would just be in pain and just have to ride all the way back to the hood. Luckily, we have one of the best doctors in the state. Otherwise, I'd hardly have no teeth right now. I'd be having some wood teeth like George Washington. So I did tell you, my tip of the day is when someone comes into your office and says, oh, I want to shop around, don't believe they want to shop around. Once you come to a dentist's office, you want the dentist's office to close you. And there are only two, three reasons you won't be able to close them, I would say. One, your dental office. Two, no patient likes to see you arguing with your staff over money. You should work that out before I get there. You should have some time before that. Before we I even get there, you should have that worked out. That's the most annoying thing. And I've only seen that in offices that say stay small instead of getting big. So if you're in a dentist's office... If you're the dentist, you should not you should not just let your secretaries tell this person what the price is. You should say blah blah blah. Did Tina tell you the price? And then just say, and yeah, that means you should go out there as the authority and help them overcome those objections and talk to them. That's your responsibility, and we'll talk about that later. But the only thing I want to help with my only sales tip today is the shop around one. When people say they want to shop around, they want to shop around. They want you to close them. So do your best to close them. And that's your tip for today. And then let me confuse you, confuse you a little bit more. Here's my blackjack tip of the day. I'm going to do it for, you want to say, Martin, what's the blackjack tip of the day? Because I want to meet you at the downtown grand. How to split sixes. You split sixes when a dealer shows a two, three, four, five, and six. That's when you split your sixes and you just hit to a hard 17. And otherwise hit. That's the tip for the day. I'm rambling, but... It's time to head home. Just remember, what are you doing on the weekends? Are you making money or losing money?